Hello. Well, today I just kind of wanted to give some final thoughts on um, uh, the Batman films, you know, from 1966 to 1997. Um, you know, those uh, set of live action films. Um, you know, uh, as I said, you know, the, the, this is an incredible movie. Um, quite a bit like the show. Um, a lot of humorous moments. Um, it's always fun to rewatch uh, again and again. Um, if you haven't seen it uh, and you like this, the show, the '60s show, I think you'd probably like the uh, uh, yeah the film. Um, it's also uh, you know uh, 65 years old this year too, so that's pretty cool. Um, of course. Uh, the anthology set, and also the like a sort of standalone uh, Blu-ray of the uh, Batman. Um, put that there here. Hopefully that'll stay. But yeah, um, sort of the last things I kind of wanted to say um, regarding these movies. Um, you know, I grew up again. Again, I grew up with watching these films. Um, um, I actually like the films. Of, uh, well, I guess we're '66 uh, show. I love that show very much. Um, that was my first exposure to Batman, and then later on, when I found out I there were uh, there was a film made around the same time as the. Uh, uh, 66 uh, show like after the first season and you know got it and I watched that constantly on VHS uh, tape but uh, yeah I always loved that show and uh, I grew up with uh, the four films uh, from Burton to Schumacher those films more than uh, the 66 film though when I got the 66 film I you know watched that a lot um, always enjoyed it, um, and especially since uh, the home video market for like a you know DVDs and you know, for a good while with Blu-ray, you know you couldn't get the '66 show at all, not unless you bought bootlegs, um, which I guess could vary in quality. Some might have some good quality, some bad. But regardless, um, you know, uh, whenever the, t the TV show is on, um, any channel, you know, I would watch it. I would watch it anytime I could. But um, I do have the, uh, you know, the big box set so of the complete series, so now I, I can watch that anytime I want, um, which is nice. Um, you know, this video is really about just my fondness for these films and the show also a little bit. Even though I haven't really talked about the show, but it, because of the film, it came out in 66. I think it's sort of appropriate that I can say some stuff about that. I really, you know, it, you know, I've, I've always enjoyed the darkness of Batman. And so throughout the course of um, watching the, these four films again, to talk about them, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how the series ended up. Um, that, film, that, that film series, you know, it started off really strong, really good, and then it became to the point of Batman and Robin, and, you know, Batman and Robin for various things was not good and and I said and I still maintain that I can enjoy that film in a so bad it's good uh, way um, so you know I'm able to enjoy all of these films um, I didn't mention certain things of these uh, films such as you know Bane and Batman and Robin but then I thought you know what what can I say about Bane that has never been said already you know it's like it, it, this that that interpretation of Bane is not 
correct for the, uh, uh, the, the comics, you know, and Joel Schumacher saying, like, yo, be, wanted, like, a big muscular guy, because, you know, Poison Ivy is most, m more of a seductress and doesn't do a whole lot of physical fighting in, of her own, you know. She usually has others do it for her, you know, because of her, what she's able to do with the uh, various concoctions and make people fall in love with her and everything, and has plants to do her bidding for her, also, like, vines and such. Um, so they thought when she's out and about, you know, need a big hulking guy or somebody to be the, her muscle, and that was Bane, but unfortunately they didn't give Bane the intelligence he has. Um, uh, Bane, you know, in The Dark Knight Rises is a lot closer to the Bane of the comics. Sure, with the whole venom and making him huge and all, that's not part of it, but again, the Dark Knight trilogy is more realistic uh, in its tone. But even then, there is still some sort of fantastical elements to those films, like, while they're realistic and, like, this could happen uh, if Batman was ever real, at the same time, there are moments in them that, uh, it's like, uh, in the real world, that likely could, couldn't happen. Uh, and if it did happen, it would probably uh, occur differently. And the, uh, yeah, uh, the, the colors of the Batman Forever and Batman and Robin are quite colorful, very vibrant, you know. They don't totally match the tone of the Tim Burton films, you know, which are more dark and gritty and gothic, like uh, quite a bit like the comic books of the time. Um, and, of course, the tones are different. Tim Burton was going darker, where Schumacher went to a lighter direction. Good chunk of that was all thanks to Warner Brothers, you know, because of Batman Returns and how people weren't fond of the the reception of that film. They decided to dial back and be more of the uh, Adam West sort of Batman in terms of the tone, a bit campier. Um, whether that works for everybody or not, um, you know, who knows? Maybe that it was a good thing, maybe it was a bad thing. Um, of course, you know, people love the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, you know, I do too. And without, like, Batman or Robin happening, it's argued that perhaps those three films would never have been made. Um, and with those three films, people really began to take the comic book films, superhero films, a lot more seriously. I know people do talk about X-Men, uh, Spider-Man, and Blade, and particularly Spider-Man, with, you know, getting more people enraptured and interested in comic book films again, which is true. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, also sort of a reminiscent of Tim Burton's Batman. You know, people went and saw Batman a lot. Of course, I wasn't one of those people because, you know, I uh, came about in the 90s, but you know, I remember as a kid re watching that film a lot uh, and watching the 66 show a lot anytime there were reruns. Um, the 92 show, um, Batman the Animated Series, um, you know, that's quite popular, um, I haven't talked about that really before, though, then again, uh, I mean, there were, there was, like, Batman or the Phantasm and stuff, and, um, but that show had to take some elements inspired from the, uh, Tim Burton films, so, you know, there is sort of an, uh, uh, homage, tribute of that series to the first film in particular. Um, um, you know, and that show is quite good, though um, in my discussion with Daisuke Beppu, I wasn't a huge fan of that show, and 
I've come to realize part of that is because the villains were more interesting than Batman and Bruce Wayne. Um, it, you know, that's great. That's great for the villains. You know, it gives them more of a personality, sort of beyond some of the comic book uh, uh, characterization. Sometimes they, there are some good comics that uh, uh, explored certain villains that Batman would f fight or face. It'd be very interesting. Sometimes not so much. Um, he did have some villains that were kind of like one-offs and never uh, showed up again. Like in the 50s and 60s, there were some interesting and odd characters that never caught on. Um, with, um, you know, uh, the animated show, you know, uh, Mark Hamill's Joker was awesome. Uh, not completely like Jack Nicholson's Joker, but it's interesting just to see a different contrast. Of course, you know, the show wasn't able to be as dark as the uh, film, but the show, the animated series, was quite dark in and of itself. Um, you know, people often talk about how, you know, the Mr. Freeze aspect of Batman and Robin, where he uh, was trying to find a cure for his uh, wife, uh, who has a terminal illness, and he freezes her, until, and then an accident happens, and then he's essentially locked into this, like a, has his body temperature, is always at a very cold temperature, and has to have it at, at a uh, specific uh, temperature all the time, and creates a suit to help him stay cool. And, you know, and that makes the character uh, more interesting, as opposed to, say, like the, the 66 show, which is reflected the comics, where he was just like a robber and would just freeze people. Um, that was really it. That's the re why he was like Mr. Freeze, where initially he was uh, Sub-Zero or uh, something of those lines. And, you know, uh, Mr. Freeze, I think, is a better name. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that aspect of Batman Robin is quite good, but... <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, apologies for that. Apologies for that. Uh, but, you know, that aspect, I think, of Batman and Robin is quite good and promising. But the execution just isn't that great. I mean, you have Arnold Schwarzenegger being having to say one-liners quite often. So that kind of, you know, some of the dramatic moments that the character of, in Batman and Robin of Mr. Freeze that he has, some of that is a bit lost when he's going around saying, all right, everyone, chill and cool party and other other ice puns and stuff. That's like, uh, you know, you can laugh at it because of how over the top campy and stuff. But uh, the, the you know the the way the direction of the series went, it I don't think it should have gone the campy route. But you know, the lighter tone of Batman Forever. Which I, I talked about how it was a bit on quite unbalanced. You know, he has some serious and dark moments with Bruce Wayne and Batman and you know, Dick Grayson. Um, and there are some times, you know, Two Face was quite, you know, serious and dark. But it'd be goofy and everything. I was like, what? You know, uh, Riddler was goofy too. Granted, it was Jim Carrey playing the Riddler, so there's that. Uh,. But you could also see it as a bit of a homage to Frank Gorshin, Riddler. Um, with, um, you know, and I didn't really talk about Billy D. Williams, but, you know, he did a very good job in Batman. Um, it would have been cool to see him return, you know, in, uh, in a future installment. Um, though I know he finally got to voice Two-Face in uh, Lego Batman, so... It's cool he finally got to be Two-Face, even though he didn't have the makeup and stuff and everything. He got to be Two-Face, finally. Though, I would have liked to have seen him, you know, as as Two-Face. You know, he 
there are, there are people who don't really acknowledge, you know, Billy D. Williams was Harvey Dent in Batman. Yes, he was in it, people know it, but, like, because he didn't get to become Two-Face later on, sometimes people just sort of, like, uh, don't totally correlate the connection of the characters, um, of the character of that he plays with. In Batman and what later we see, because Tommy Lee Jones um, uh, played him. Um, you know, um, and I talked about the chemistry with Michael Keaton and uh, Kim Basinger, and how I wasn't too fond of uh, of their chemistry together, and noted how I've heard some people say, you know, Michael Keaton was a bit stiff in Batman, and, you know, I, would, I sort of saw that and just kind of I chalked it up to, like, you know, his chemistry with Kim Basinger, uh, like, I, like, I wasn't a huge fan of that, you know, his, his chemistry with Michael Michelle Pfeiffer, um, that was more, uh, that was better, uh, to me, I think that was better, and I think part of that is because, you know, Sean Young was supposed to be Vicky Vale and Batman, but she broke her leg because she rode a horse and it fell. And yeah, it's she didn't get to be Vicky Vale. Um, so uh, at the last minute, Kim Basinger came in, and uh, you know she did her, she did the part. Um, I think part of that could be uh, her sort of coming in in the last minute. Um, so. On that end, it's like, well, you know, she did the best she could, but I think as a result of that, you know, like maybe her and Michael Keaton didn't get to spend perhaps as much time as uh, they could have had they, uh, uh, had she have been cast from the very beginning with, like, you know, Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson and others, um, since she was sort of there at the last minute. For me, at least, I think that's kind of where that uh, that aspect of their chemistry being quite wonky and doesn't work as well as, say, the chemistry between Michael Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, but there's that. I also kind of wanted to clarify that because, uh, you know, sometimes uh, doing stuff like this, you get to finally kind of look back on what was said and, you know, get to have more, or give a final word, basically. Um, I don't really have a whole lot to say about the 66 film, because I, I, I just love it. It's, it's great. With uh, Batman Returns, um, yeah, all well, the Penguin, you know, he was gross. He, yeah, a bit sympathetic, because uh, of the situation from the very beginning. His parents don't love him as much as he should. He, like, kills the family cat and, you know, but, yeah, he, he they just get, just got rid of him, and that is quite sad. Um, he, uh, yeah, Danny DeVito, you know, he does a good job. He does the job he was hired to do. Um, yeah, uh, Michael Goff, you know, it was Alfred. Uh, he does a fantastic job. Um, you know, uh, he's in all of these films. He's one of two uh, actors in these. That's in all of the films. Uh, you know, he just does a good job as Alfred. Um, and uh, Pat Hingle, too, you know, is the, the acting of those two, you know, being in all four films, you know, they do their best. Um, though with Commissioner Gordon, he was given less and less to do with each installment, which is unfortunate, especially if, you know, if you've read the comics or, you know, or even the, the other shows, you know, Batman and Commissioner Gordon are allies, you know, they, they trust each other, or they work together, um, you know, 
Gordon on the side of a wall and Batman a, a little bit outside of the law. You know, he does some stuff that you know, the police aren't necessarily able to do because of the laws in place. Um, where Batman does his duty like to like help Gotham and everything. Uh, like, like it seems like it's his duty at times. Um, still, he uh, is able to operate in a way outside of the law. But the the dynamic between Batman and Gordon isn't really explored much uh, in these films, which is a bit disappointing. You know, with the Dark Knight trilogy, you got to see that, and Christian Bale and Gary Oldman's chemistry is great. Um, as is Michael Caine's chemistry with um, Christian Bale. I think, uh, you know, to me, I've always said that, you know, like, Michael Caine is Alfred Pennyworth. Um, and... Uh, Gary Oldman is Gordon. He's Commissioner Gordon. He's James Gordon. Um, and of course, there will always be people who will debate Batman and all, you know, who is the best and all. It, of course, it's always opinionated. I mean, even that. Uh, who my favorite Bat, uh, Gordon and Alfred are. It's all my opinion. Um, it's a combination, I think, of the material they were given, you know, given really great material to work with and then you know also the chemistry they have with everyone they interact with you know and the direction they were given you know and Christian Bale for me is still my favorite Batman uh, he's the best Batman for me and Bruce Wayne uh, he just always he just seemed to perfectly embody the characterization I always wanted to sort of see as a kid from reading the comics and watching the films and the various shows. Um, but even with that, I still think Michael Keaton is great. Val Kilmer, you know, we've been rewatching this. He, he does some good work. Um, it's just a real shame, you know, the material he was given wasn't as great as it could have been. Tone was all back and forth between being serious and campy and just didn't work very well for Batman Forever. George Clooney isn't really that great, and I don't, I didn't really get into a whole lot of reasons why uh, that, along with the Bane aspect, uh, sort of, uh, uh, was sort of a bit of a bummer for me, but for, for, for George Clooney, I can see why he could be seen as a good Bruce Wayne or Batman. You know, he looks good in the suit, even though with the nipples and all, but, you know, with just picturing his face with that cowl, it looks pr pretty good. Looks like, yeah, he could be Batman. And as uh, Bruce Wayne, yeah, in the suit and everything, he looks quite good. The thing is, he just doesn't seem to be very invested and it, like he's getting paid quite well, and, you know. So it's like you know, hey, gotta show up and do my job, do my lines and all. But it just doesn't seem like he's totally invested. And that's not to say he wasn't at all in any way. It's just any enthusiasm he had, at least for me, he just didn't seem to be totally committed. Like yeah, I'm, <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna do the best job. I'm gonna you know, maybe not be better, be able to be better than Michael Keaton or Val Kilmer, but he's going to be good in his own right. And I know he was also filming ER at the same time, and he wasn't able to be completely dedicated to filming uh, Batman and Robin all the time. And I guess that could be seen as a reason as to why... Uh, uh, his performances and all that great, but even then, it's like you know. So there have been people who have filmed a TV show and a movie, like at the same time. You know, Michael J. Fox filmed um, Family Ties and Back to the Future uh, at the same time. He pretty much didn't really get to have much of a break at all. Um, so, but yeah, and his performance in Back to the Future is great. You know, you can really tell he's giving his all. And you can also, I guess, if you 
watch the season of Family Ties, he was um, in uh, that that was uh, being filmed at the same time as Back to the Future. You know, he was really, you know, he was like good in that season too. Um, with George Clooney, it's like he because of his constant uh, performances and character as uh, on ER. I'm sure, like you know, this performance on that show, that season was probably a lot better than, say, um, um, <clears throat> than uh, Batman or Robin. Um, yeah, Chris O'Donnell as Dick Grayson, uh, Robin. He's okay. Yeah, you know. Again, those two films he was in weren't the best written, so in many ways that does have a lot to do with the performances by some, but you know they try to do what they can to work with uh, Alicia Silverstone as uh, uh, Barbara Wilson, Batgirl. You know, I talked about how she was uh, changed to be the... Uh, Alfred's uh, niece, which even today people don't like that, but you know it's it is what it is, I guess. Um, maybe one day we'll get a Barbara Gordon that becomes Batgirl, um, you know, like in a live action version. I think there's supposed to be a Batgirl film at some point. Uh, that could be quite interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, these films. Uh, there's quite a bit of an entertainment value out of all of them. Um, even if there's one that's like so bad it's good, you know, I'm entertained by it. You know, as long as you're able to be entertained by movies, you know, then the movie um, does its job. You know, of all the Batman films I've seen, um, yeah, I've always been entertained. Um, I've never found one where I thought it's just so bad it's bad. Um, I think I thought about that for Batman and Robin at a time. That's re I think that was really because for a while at a young age when I saw Batman and Robin, you know, I loved it because I was a kid. Really loved it for a few years, but then after a while, didn't love it as much. And then as years went on, just trying to figure out why that was. And then I saw Batman Begins, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, that was a really good film. You know, that's a great film. Batman and Robin is, and that's why. Um, but now, <clears throat> after that trilogy of films is done, and I'm able to reflect on not only those films, but these even more so, because I grew up with these films. Um, you know, you're able to, like, sort of reevaluate things and have a, a bit of a different perspective, or maybe see things in a way that, uh, maybe you could have always seen them, but, you know, because of just how things were, like how you perceived certain things up at a time, like how I really loved Batman and Robin, and then I didn't for a while, and I didn't know why, and then I just said, oh, that just sucks, it's not good, and so on and so forth. Yeah, uh, you know, that's changed a bit for me. Um, yeah. Of the four of these, Batman 89 is my favorite Batman film for this franchise. Love Batman 66. Um, but the animated series, you know, it's a, var it's a very good series. Um, I know I didn't really talk about any of those uh, episodes or anything, but uh, I just, um, yeah. I, I found I've, uh, I enjoy live action more than animation. Of course, you know, animation, animated movies, animated shows, you know, they're they're excellent, they're great. Um, but I just like the live action more because it's interesting to see, like for comic book films in particular, like for Batman and all, that how to perhaps, like, not only do they have to, like, draw sketches of stuff of suits and then and vehicles and other things, but then have to build all of that, uh, to try and also having them to be to work 
Um, you know, it's really interesting to see all that um, just really come to life. Whereas if it's animated, you know, it's drawn. And, and of course, you know, drawing and then animating everything is, that's not easy to do. So I do appreciate that in its own right also. Um, but I think uh, with live action, being able to really see it and perhaps it, and they have museums and you can go and see various uh, bat suits and uh, bat mobiles and other things, you know, it's like you could you can actually see those in, in some instances you get to, you can even uh, sit in bat mobiles, you know, for a little bit. Uh, so, whereas you really can't do that with animation, I mean, sure, you can see some perhaps stills, like original stills of like uh, of the Batman animated series would be really cool. You know, they could have like a section of that in a museum or some place you could visit and really uh, enjoy it. And um, yeah, but with me, I've just always enjoyed uh, live action more. Uh, and perhaps that's also another reason why I prefer the live action films and show to the animated series. But the animated series is very good in its own right. Uh, quite entertaining. Many episodes are, you know, fantastic. I found the joke episodes with the Joker and or Harley Quinn are amongst my favorite of that show. Um, though I'm, I'm I'm just a bit disappointed that, you know, as I've come to realize that, you know, I like the hero more than the villains and. When like a show like Batman the Animated Series has the villains a bit more interesting than the hero, that's just a little disappointing to me. I mean, it's still good and everything. You know, I don't want to say that it it isn't good because uh, it clearly is. It's clearly a really, you know, excellent uh, show. I just enjoy stuff where Batman is more interesting. I think he is definitely in the '66 show, though with the Batman. Uh, these films, the villains are also a bit more interesting than Batman, but uh, there are decent moments with Batman and Bruce Wayne also alone. So there are there, you know. So there is all that. Um, you know, I've talked about the Dark Knight trilogy a lot, so I'm not going to follow this all up with uh, me discussing those films because I've already done so. Um, but, you know, uh, and you can watch those. I even made something about The Dark Knight Rises regarding, like, how, you know, for me, there are no plot holes or anything of that nature. And I go, and I went through, like, a list of what I meant and all. But that's over an hour. So if you're interested in seeing that, and what I have to say, and all, you can definitely watch it. Um, but, yeah, uh... I just wanted to conclude this uh, these series of videos of, from the 1966 Batman film to the franchise of films from 89 to 97. Uh, I hope you thought, found this uh, interesting in any way. Um, I know there are people who've commented and stuff of that like that, so that's always cool. Uh, interacting uh, and everything. Um, I have some ideas of what I want to talk about next. So I don't think they're going to be comic book related. So just just be just keep that in mind. Not going to be comic book uh, based. Uh, at least I don't believe so. Uh, there's just some films I want to talk about um, that I've wanted to for a while. And I'm just now finally getting around to doing so. But, yeah, this was a fun thing to do, talking about, you know, the Batman movies I grew up with before the Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, my favorite set of Batman films, as I've often pointed out on this channel. Um, but I wanted to show more fondness to all these films individually instead of just having, like, one video I made, like, a some time ago where I just talked about my general thoughts of these. And I think my opinion or thoughts of, uh, like, Batman and Robin has changed a bit. You know, I think so. Uh, it's been a little while since I've watched that, so I can't 
completely remember what word for word I said when I mentioned that, but I think I have lightened up uh, my stance on that a bit. Um, and I think for the better, too. You know, it's not, it's, it, I think it is the worst Batman film, but even the worst has some entertaining, entertainment value. So that's always good. It's not like one where it's just boring. You know, that, that, that always sucks when you watch a film in a franchise that you enjoy. Then there's like an entry or two or however that's just quite boring. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. And, uh, Again, hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope you appreciated also uh, how uh, oh, uh, sixty for its sixty fifth anniversary. Uh, me just talking about uh, uh, these films and starting with Batman the movie. Um, yes, after Christian Bale. Even though I love the darkness of Batman and everything, Adam West is still always is my second favorite Batman. That kind of baffles some people. But you know he, he he was Batman for his time, and he was genuine in it. He you could tell from that show and the film. He's really into it. He's Batman, you know. I remember seeing a clip of him on another show, like you know, I never needed to say I'm Batman. I jump in a room and everybody knew who I was. You know, he never needed to announce himself, and uh, you know that is true. Um, maybe we will, uh, see as, uh, more films go on, less and less of I'm Batman. Even though that's a really cool, uh, f uh, line to say in, like, in the first entry of a film that he, that Batman is, Batman does of a, like, a, a potential franchise, um, it would be interesting to see, uh, uh, Batman not say that anymore. Um, I don't know if that will happen, but it's just interesting, you know. Come goes into a room, everybody knows who he is, you know, and that and that is quite true. Um, and Burt Ward as Robin was excellent in the film, in the film, and the show. As were the villains and everybody who, all the other supporting cast. Always entertaining and always fun. Um, and I always love re-watching these films. So I hope you all enjoyed the again. I know just before I always, I feel like I'm going to end it, think of something else. But I really think I'm done now. Again, thank you for watching. And stay, if you've stayed all the way to the end, thank you. Um, this is uh, This was really fun to do. I hope you got, guys found some entertainment out of it, too. Um, and, uh, yeah. Look forward to my non-comic book superhero film next week. Um, yeah. Oh, there might be something related comic book-wise to it, but you know what? We'll, we'll see when that happens, but, uh, yeah. Also, I got a haircut and shaved, so. That's always nice. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And have a great week. See you all next time.